Hi everyone, welcome to another Fireside Chat. I am here with Yunan, who is the co-founder and VP of product at Wiz. Yunan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So uh, let, yeah, let's dive right in and get started. Uh, I'd love to know more about your personal journey in the tech industry. Uh, how did you get from where you started to VP of product? Um, okay, so I was born in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, so I actually started my studies in as part of uh, the Air Force elite program uh, called Talpiot in the Hebrew University. I learned, uh, studied math, computer science, physics, and I started uh, my journey as a, a cyber specialist. Uh, and uh, basically, after completing my service, I uh, was... Uh, I joined Adelom. Adelom was a startup. It was a very a new startup in the cloud security space. Uh, we were barely like 10 people and uh, I was told, come be the VP of product. It was very small. And I basically uh, took over the product role and uh, uh, ran <clears throat> for a very fun ride for two years uh, until uh, 2015, where we were acquired by Microsoft. Uh, we were a Casby product, SaaS security. Uh, at Microsoft, I actually had the, the uh, real uh, privilege to take the product from being a startup to enterprise scale. So taking it all the way from to all the way to one and a half billion dollars uh, across hundreds of millions of users. Uh, and then two years ago, uh, the team uh, we left to found Wiz. Wiz is a uh, cloud security company. Uh, and again, same role, VP of product. Excellent. Uh, so I'd love to dive in and ask you some questions about cybersecurity, but let's start with talking about Wiz. Um, in products, you know, we're always talking about being obsessed with the problem and not with the solution you're, uh, you're trying to build. So can you tell me what problems you're obsessed with at Wiz and how you're solving them? Yeah, of course. So uh, basically the problem that I'm obsessed on it is cybersecurity, right? Uh, but uh, I think that it's much deeper than just cybersecurity. When we look at cloud security, uh, so let's start with cloud as a whole. Cloud is uh, obviously a very new space when talking about technology. It's here for, let's say, a few years, a decade, but only in the past few years, I think uh, we have realized the benefit of cloud. So we have seen massive migration uh, to the cloud. So uh, any organization is either now born uh, cloud native or uh, now migrating to the cloud. Uh, I think cloud is advancing in a, a, a phenomenal, faster than any other technology we have seen in the past, but and offers like really all the cool stuff to the developers so they can run as fast as possible. On the flip side, doing security for cloud is actually a huge problem or a challenge, I should say. First, I think that uh, the complexity of the environment that organizations need to secure is, let's say, uh, much more complex than what they used to have. So multiple clouds, multiple architectures, when you think about containers, VMs, past services, serverless functions, all of this operating, and you need to secure all of that. Uh, thousands of technologies that are being put into place. So everybody wants to use the latest and greatest. Uh, so that's around the environment. The other complexity is around basically the risk. So understanding like what is risk in the cloud? Is it just uh, vulnerabilities, misconfigurations, or is it something much deeper, for instance, around understanding exposure path, understanding permissions? So actually cloud security is much more complex than what we were used to and lots more options. And the third problem is actually around how do you do it at scale? How do you do it at the scale of the business, at the pace of the business without blocking the business? So I think when you take these three complexities, they, they, they really create a very uh, problematic uh, uh, environment for cloud security teams that basically want to enable their businesses to do, to run as, you know, at the, at, as fast as they can to develop, to, to modernize, to uh, actually become digitally transformed and do more, uh, but they need to secure this. So that's the challenge. Um, one more data point, by the way, I think that interesting to see that uh, by, according to Gartner, by 2025, more than 50% of all uh, IT spent in the world will be around cloud services, like cloud functionality. So you can see like how you can really uh, we are moving to this space, but we're need, still not really equipped to secure it. Mm -hmm. So definitely not small challenges that you're facing or small small problems that you're so solving. This is big stuff. Um, and well, apparently you're doing it very well, because I think, was it um, 
C CNBC, that was it, CNBC and Business Insider named you guys the fastest growing, um, sorry, fastest growing security company. Uh, congratulations on your success. That's amazing. Um, I feel quite lucky that as a co-founder, you may be able to give us a bit of the inside scoop of how you guys did that. How did you manage to build the fastest growing security company? Um, so, uh, yeah, we are actually running super fast. So we were founded, uh, actually, tomorrow it's going to be two years. Uh, oh. So since we are founding, then we, we are running super fast, right? So uh, I think we raised, uh, we are topping like 300 uh, employees, uh, more than $600 million in revenues and uh, $600 million in funding. And I think that uh, the, the nicest figures is actually that we have more than 20% of the Fortune 500 using the service already today. We in just like two years since inception. So I think that this is a really fast growing. And when you look at the um, story of Wiz, so really Wiz is a result of 20 years of teamwork. Uh, so Wiz is a team, the same, actually my story, the story that I, uh, I told you uh, earlier on is the same story of like the core team of Wiz. So more than like 20, 30 different uh, uh, folks on the team that we went together for uh, uh, the past 20 years building cloud security products. Uh, so I think that one, it's a teamwork. And when you think about teamwork, uh, actually it's about the ability to work together in a very uh, harmonious way. Uh, so think about two years ago, where, where was the world? So it was just COVID started. We were all in quarantine, but we worked seamlessly together because we simply know each other and we know like, how to, to operate together. It's true for the team, it's true for the founding team. So actually I think that having a very strong team at its core is the most fundamental way to run fast. Uh, second, I do think that we are experienced in multiple uh, senses that allows us to do less mistakes, okay? In the sense that one, we have built to scale at Microsoft, we've been in cloud security for a long time, we have done a startup, so we know how it looks like when you're a startup. So getting all of these angles actually build a very solid experience that allows you to know what is good, what is bad, as, and so you can move fast. And we are, as you mentioned, in a, uh, 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 burning space right now. So there is a dire need. There is a, actually a void in of solutions right now. All of the solutions are, I would call them like first generation. They're not really hitting on the, the, the pain point. And I think that uh, it's a space that is uh, in dire need for a better solution. And fourth, I think we have a really good culture in the end. I think that when we build a, a company, the culture is one thing that sticks and a culture that basically helps you be successful. So very uh, customer first approach. We'll talk about it, I'm sure it's a part of the product, but customer first approach, the ability to have a very supporting environment, asking questions, collaborating, uh, uh, being very inclusive uh, uh, of uh, uh, other ideas and, and glorify uh, trust, I would say. So trust is first of everything. So I think all of these make with uh, like fun to work with. So it makes people want to move faster. Mm -hmm. And um, I know we're talking about cybersecurity as uh, one of those spaces that's really growing. Um, I know that every time we talk about cybersecurity in our community or anytime someone brings up that they work in cybersecurity, there's always so much buzz around it of people saying, oh, I want to learn more. Uh, I really want to get into cybersecurity. This is the career for me. Um, what are some of the unique challenges of working in cybersecurity that maybe product managers in particular should prepare themselves for if they're thinking about moving into the space? So product and actually being product in cloud security is, is really interesting because uh, I think first uh, the the level of complexity of understanding the what we call the red side, which is the uh, uh, threat actors, so the attackers, understanding the blue side, which is uh, the defenders, and then again at the understanding the uh, um, the technology technological landscape, the environment. Uh, you need to do all of these together in order to like go into uh, uh, and be successful, I think, as a cybersecurity uh, product manager. So you actually have to get a really solid view of the um, 
uh, multiple parties, and then you need to build a product that uh, needs to face with huge amounts of data, a lot of noise, a lot of different personas, different levels of expertise with the teams. Uh, uh, I think uh, enterprise building, it's mostly like enterprise software that needs to adapt for like, you know, be ready for enterprise adoption. So there are lots of challenges actually in cybersecurity that uh, require you to be really in the details. On the flip side, I think that cybersecurity is also going through, um, cybersecurity is like in a huge uh, talent shortage right now. Um, it's not about training so many, like uh, I think cyber specialists, it's actually about consumerizing the, the knowledge of cyber. So same thing that we became very aware with uh, phishing and now, Everybody gets a phishing email. They, we, we expect them to know that they, you know, they got phished and don't click on that link and so on. So I think in general, we have a lot more awareness uh, to cybersecurity and actually having uh, security a bit simplified. I think this is one of the biggest challenges we have today. So it actually gives, uh, I think, a different type of challenge for PMs that are going into that space. How do we simplify it so it won't be just for the very few that know cyber very well? Mm -hmm. And what would you say are some of the big mistakes that companies make when it comes to security and basically protecting themselves and their businesses? Okay, so the big mistakes, I think that uh, the big mistake is not having a... Uh, uh, so if I am a company, the biggest mistake for me is not to be able to prioritize correctly, where do I spend my effort? So let alone in a startup, we always say focus, focus, prioritize. But even in larger organizations, there are so many things to do. I mean, even when you look at security, you can improve yourself to like day and night. The question is, am I doing the most important things right now to secure my cloud environment? And I think that prioritizing it is what is uh, very challenging uh, for customers. So be ruthless about prioritizing uh, your security uh, uh, um, like endeavors or, or initiatives. Uh, on the flip side, I think that visibility is this like maybe the first uh, biggest challenge because we may be thinking we're securing our environment, but in fact, we are securing a very small part of our environment. So I think visibility is in the core of like every security person, like, am I seeing everything that I need to be secure? Because if I'm not, I'm not seeing it, then I cannot protect it, right? So I think that visibility in the cloud, it, it goes to a new extreme because anybody can spin up and down new resources. Anybody can get like a cloud account or something without going through central security. So it makes it very, uh, I think uh, uh, challenging to gain visibility uh, and then prioritizing would be the next. So these are the two things that I would recommend. Make sure you have really good visibility to the environment on the flip side. Also make sure you prioritize uh, the right things. Mm -hmm. Super useful tips there. Good, great advice. Um, and as you've grown in your cybersecurity career, what do you think are some of the skills that have really helped you to get to where you are today? Um, so it's a good question. I think that first, uh, the ability as a PM, right? So uh, communications, I think, is uh, key. I think communications, teamwork, in the end, as a PM, you work with customers, you work with uh, your sales organization, you work with engineering, and your goal is really to be able to communicate back and forth, like, uh, what, how should we think about the problem? What, how should we think about solving it? What is good? What is bad? And being able to communicate it to all of the different stakeholders is in the end key. The second thing is um, uh, being able to listen and uh, basically get the information for all of the teams and have a really uh, good analytical skill in order to understand uh, what is more, what is the real truth? So what's, What's the real reason? What's the root cause for it? Like, why are customers having a hard time doing this? Why is well, this is a challenging task? Why is it hard to do today? So when you start really understanding the root cause and have a very analytical approach to it, data-driven, uh, analytical in the sense that understand the details, why it happens. So there is this why exercise that I actually do like, I know it's a cliche, but asking yourself, but why? Why is this the case? 
I think that having this ability to uh, have a, a, an analytical analysis of a problem really gets you to the place where you're saying, okay, I get it. I know what I need to solve now. And the third thing is technical skill. I told you, I don't think in our space, like in cybersecurity, it's hard to overlook the technical um, aspect of it, uh, both in terms of like understanding the problem and the solution. Uh, so, uh, you know, living, I'm living it through it like 20 years now. Uh, I think that uh, being able to understand the technique, uh, the, you know, the technical aspects of the solution and the problem are key. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, and well, th this next question isn't the easiest one to answer because job titles in product management are pretty meaningless. Let's face it. Like, uh, yeah, you can be a VP of product at one company is doing something completely different to a VP of product at another company. Um, but maybe to help us sort of demystify things a little bit, what's a typical day to day or a week to week like for you as a VP of product? Um... First, we are a very, it's funny you mentioned it, we are a very flat organization. We barely have teams uh, with the with, uh, R&D and product teams, uh, product uh, team, because uh, exactly for what you said, we, we actually work in a, what we call a, a squads, like we have uh, two developers, one PM, and you know, just go get it. Like you don't need anybody else. And I think this independence is important. So just thought it's the right place to say it about uh, titles, et cetera. It's really, it doesn't matter. But uh, to your question, I think that uh, essentially uh, uh, for for being VP of product today, it's really, I think about it as managing two uh, coins that we have for the team and for the company. One is how much value do we bring to customer? Like, are we doing a good service? Are we bringing value to all the customers? And the second is like uh, managing what I call a product debt. Are, you, are we doing it in a way that allows us to uh, continue on in a fast way, right? So we are not accruing technical debt. We are not accruing uh, too many like features that are not there yet. So making it in a very solid and consistent way that allows us to continue and run fast. I think that... Um, my typical day to day, uh, I think that uh, first talking to customers, I actually have a lot of uh, emphasis on this also with the team. So we actually do spend at least a third of our time. I know it's a lot, but at least a third of our time on customer calls across the entire life cycle. So across like them first demos, uh, POVs, and like proof of concepts, proof of values, uh, also in terms of uh, delivering, so uh, post-sale uh, engagement, and in general, like uh, working very closely to customers to develop this uh, really deep customer empathy. I think this is key, uh, and I keep doing it as like as much as I can. Uh, second, I think uh, I'm trying to read and understand the market uh, to really asking the why question. So what's happening on the red side? What's happening on the blue side? What are the processes that drive in, in like organizations to secure their space today? Uh, what are the challenges they face today? What are the most like, you know, latest and greatest on the technology aspect that we should account for? What happens with cloud technology, with competitors? So all of these are things that we do. Start building a team. So being able to build a product management team that is uh, independent, that can focus on various topics, that is diverse, versatile in knowledge, in expertise. Uh, and uh, this is key, of course. And the fourth thing that is like, I think the um, reality check all of the time is uh, identifying and continuously like unblocking unblo uh, like throttled points in the organization. It can be anywhere, but uh, I, I always say like, there is nothing like product love to untie a problem, right? So when when a PM uh, uh, looks like, gives attention to a problem, and now we use all of the tooling that we have from engineering, all of the resources like engineering, data, all of these in order to basically solve a problem, you, like we can fix anything. So making sure that we identify the areas that are not smooth and unblocking them. So mm -hmm. these are like the four things that my day-to-day -day looks like. Uh, pick your choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting how I ask that question to all of our guests and I never get the same answer twice. There's, I mean, you know, there's some, there's some core things that tie product people together um, uh, at their levels um, that are sort of um, 
you know, universal, like caring about the customers, building teams when you get to a leadership level, but every role has its own certain flavor or certain choice. So I always love getting different answers to that question. Um, So you mentioned team building in there. Um, What are some of the things that you look for specifically when you're when you're building out your team of product people? Are there any particular skills or traits or things that you particularly like to see that add to your culture? Yeah, so uh, I like uh, most I like the um, I want like the curiosity, the natural curiosity of a PM to want to learn, uh, to want to uh, understand better. I think this is like a driving factor that I'm looking and excites me about uh, PMs overall. I do like the, uh, I do think it's super important to have communication, uh, very solid communication uh, when describing a problem. And also the way, by the way, just the way I look at it, I I like to ask questions and by the response, I love. I like like to assess like wh- what's the structure in which the response was given. Right? Was it a structured response? Was it a super logical one? Was it like framing it? In the end, I think that uh, the way I would love uh, uh, working with PMs is that they can describe to me their framework, how they are thinking about the world, so I can maybe uh, uh, give my opinion. Maybe I can adapt. Right? So the ability to explain very uh, uh, clearly, how do you think about the word? Uh, how do uh, what did what do we learn? What should we learn to be to do better products to build you know to solve tough problems? Uh, I think this is key for them. And in the end, uh, it's teamwork. Uh, I, I think that PMs in the end, it's all about uh, teaming up with customers, with engineers, with marketing, with sellers. Like it has to be about the team. Uh, so that would be something that, of course, and uh, I mean, part of the culture, it's really important for us to see. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And, and another thing I love about getting answers to that particular question is all the things that product leaders love in their teams. It's all something that's very achievable for everyone, no matter where they come from. No one has ever answered that question with, well, you need a CS degree from Harvard or Yale. Oh. No, no one has ever answered with specifics. It's always things that are very yeah, universal to product managers. So fantastic answer there. Um, uh, we're coming down to our last couple of minutes, but I think we've got time to squeeze in some more fun questions. Um, product people are always learning, lifelong learners. What are some of the things that you're learning about at the moment or something that you want to make time for learning in the future? Uh, wow, uh, about learning. Uh, so I think that today, um, I think that I'm seeing lots of challenges around, I call it enterprise usability. Okay, and it's interesting because enterprises, uh, so we are operating in a a B2B, of course, uh, actually in the higher end of enterprises uh, as well. It's interesting to see that enterprises have all of the technology uh, they could afford, but the the, the value they can get out of it is um, not always at its max, right? And they can have various tools, but they don't work together, they don't integrate. So actually with when I build with one of the challenges that I really try to solve deep is how can we get it to an enterprise and they can simply use it across. And when you realize that there are many new and like many funk features that are not glorified in any way, but this is what makes it enterprise ready. I think this is like, for me, I'm learning more and more about this, uh, uh, let's call it the, the small things that make enterprise software consumed easily. So it's around functionality and integration and, and permissions and logging and all of these. And you could really see how great products fail because they couldn't uh, cater for uh, uh, the enterprise space that early. Uh, also, I have to say that in terms of cyber, you cannot stop learning, uh, the, the, and, and let alone, uh, I know it's uh, a bit uh, uh, happening like recent, but you're seeing what happened between the Ukrainian and Russian uh, conflict and the, the role of cyber in the discussion. And you can look at the articles, like cyber is like such a dimension, it's happening, it's happening, and you can't it's happening fast. So keep learning like what is this, how the threat actors use cyber and how can we defend against it? I think that in the end, and this is also when you look at the World Economic Forum and they mention like, what are the terrifying things we should worry about? So of course there is climate change, but second it's 
cybersecurity. These are things that can devastate the world as we know it because everything is connected to internet. Everything is from critical infrastructure to uh, anti-airplane uh, uh, missiles uh, 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 that protect uh, different countries. It's crazy. And understanding this, I think, is key. And I'm passionate about it. I'm reading about it every morning. That's the benefit of being in Tel Aviv. Basically, uh, I wake up. There is nobody else that is uh, awake, right? So I have all, a few hours to read all the news, all the uh, research. Uh, so I get up to date and then uh, start my day. Mm, that's how I feel being on the European product school team. Yes. Everyone's asleep for a few hours, so we have like <laughs> yes. ourselves. As much as we love our American colleagues, it's really nice. Um, so uh, anyway, we, we've got time for just one more question, which you will either love or hate. If you could sum up the feeling of working in cybersecurity at the moment in just a couple of words, what would they be? Um, it's a tough question. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually, I would say it needs to be like, it simply works, right? I think that basically when we think of cyber, I just want to make like, when I think about it for me, with it simply works for customers. And I think this is what we're missing a lot. Uh, and when I hear from customers, for instance, that they, I love it when they say, oh, it was just easy. I just used it. It, it. it seems simple. That's like after so many years of challenging products that you crank everything just to make it work. When you hear from a customer that it just it simply works. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I think this is like where we need to go to with cyber. It just simply works. <laughs> Fantastic. What a positive note to end on there. Uh, Yunon, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pre pleasure chatting with you. Thank you very, very much for having me. It was a pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will see you in the next Fireside Chat. Bye.